Welcome back to the Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast to talk all things comic books and video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today, we are recapping Hasbro PulseCon. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Ken Brown. I'm Lance O'Neill. And before we dive into it, just wanted to take a second to thank you all for taking the time to listen to Nightcap Chat and make it a part of your weekly routine. You know, without you guys, uh, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have Nightcap Chat. So thank you for that. We appreciate yeah. your your patronage, if you will. Yeah, listen to us while you do your cardio. You know, I noticed that almost everybody that listens to Nightcap Chat listens during the week. Almost nobody listens oh, on the weekends, cool. but everyone listens during the week. So I don't know if they're on their way to draw the comics or on their way from home, work, school. I actually, somebody I talked to um, said they, they did listen to, they do listen to Night Cap Chat uh, on their way to school. Um, and they might listen to it into school, in school. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You can, you can do that now. Wow. Yeah. And when I went to school, like you couldn't have your phone out. Like you would get that taken away. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, what, a, what a crazy world we live in. Yeah. So a little bit of news before we dive into the Hasbro PulseCon mm-hmm. stuff, which was just fantastic. Um, every Marvel film that had a date got delayed. They're all gone. No Marvel <laughs> films this week. We're not getting anything yeah. till May. Wow. May, May now? May 2021. Film? Yes. May. Wow. I'm going to say it one more time in case the, the people listening did not hear me the first five times. May. It's going to be time. May. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm, May. I'm so sad. I, I bought a shirt for the Black Widow premiere. It's got Black Widow on it, obviously. And it's just sitting in my closet now. And now it's just going to sit there till May because I, I don't want to wear it. Oh, Lance is wearing his Black Widow shirt here. Coincidentally, they just started the new Black Widow comic series too, as well. Yeah, and they're probably yeah. doing for the Black Widow for the movie that's delayed until yeah. May. May, May. <sighs> well, at least we have one division. We have one division. We have one division, and it's and it's, it's going to be it's okay. going to be amazing. It's going to be okay. Yes. So, is Loki and? Captain America and Winter Soldier still coming out on Disney Plus? Or are they Loki gonna just that? resumed filming. Wait. And okay. Captain America, I mean, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier is supposed to come out okay. early 2021. Okay. I don't remember if it was January or February. Before May, though. Before, before May. May though, right? Before May. Okay. It's gonna be but January. we still have WandaVision and The Mandalorian. That's true. So, yes. Try to keep. So your t- I don't know. We I'm may trying not to be positive. Have to wait. No. The good thing is we may not have to wait for the TV shows until May. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is that is absolutely correct. It's only Black Widow that's <laughs> delayed until May. <laughs> can't May can't be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess she may not be. Uh, yes. Fannie uh, Mae's rates will probably increase. <laughs> I'm sure we're the only ones Where, having, having fun with this. Wait, may uh, I say something? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely, you <sighs> So Hasbro Pulse Con was over the weekend. Yes. And thanks to Ken, I, I realized that there's a premier membership that gives you early access to to all the goodies, which is, which to me, one of the biggest highlights um, we actually had one of these virtual conventions that not only had some exclusive merchandise, if you will, but they had good exclusive merchandise. Because like the, yeah. the Comic-Con from home, I ordered one comic book and there was like nothing else. So I'm thinking all of these retailers are being a, a little bit selfish here and they're kind of yes. keeping them for themselves. Like I was able to get a hold of uh, the Hellfire Club Marvel Legends set. Man, wow, it's such a cool set. It's such a cool set, dude. That thing looked, that thing looked awesome. Mm. That's the two. I was, I was dumb enough to let that pass me by, mm. and I don't think because it was there for, I think it was Thursday or it was Wednesday, the start of Wednesday um, was the Hasbro pre Post-Con. was the pre order, um, day. So I had it in my cart with a Wampa, and surprisingly, the Wampa stayed. 
And I was hoping to get the Cobra Commander, which was sold out on view night. Mm-hmm. And so I put the Hellfire Club and the Wampa in my cart waiting for hopefully getting all three together on Thursday. Well, sure enough, I got the Cobra Commander, but guess what was sold out in my cart? The Hellfire Club. The Hellfire Club. Oh. Yes. So unfortunately, I rolled the dice and it came up a uh, snake eyes to more or less uh, crap out my yeah. Hellfire Club opportunities. Yeah. I got the pun though, the snake eyes, you know, like G.I. Joe, snake eyes. Like, snake eyes. I got the commander, but the snake eyes crapped out for the Hellfire Club. No, they're yeah. not climbing too much yet. Last one sold for a hundred and then one thirty. So not not too yeah. much more, but I, I bet there's gonna be a steady increase. I mean, just just having uh Jean Grey as the black queen in that set alone. You know, is gonna is gonna drive that up in my opinion. I was also able to grab the yeah. um the Lord Dracon uh figure. That's a cool looking really movie. really cool figure. And his his box is pretty big because he's got all that glowing energy and he has all those other uh Power Ranger helmets and he's got all these accessories and stuff. It was a super cool figure. Uh, and I I don't, I'm, a, I'm a big Jason David Frank fan, so like I I could not pass that up, you know. Absolutely not. I'm glad you got your, your oh, G.I. Joe, though. Oh, my gosh. That Cobra Commander is... It's unbelievable that they somehow Hasbro finds a way to release the same figure in three <laughs> different ways. Yeah. And G.I. Joe fans will just eat it up. Do you know what I mean? It's like there is a blue version that matches the cartoon colors. There uh... is a navy blue version that is more or less the their version of the classified. And then there's this deluxe edition that has like the vine or the fabric cape and just extra accessories mm-hmm. with it. And it mm-hmm. just, just looks like it's the, how would you say the most deluxe of word version of it? They can do that. It's got a slip case over it. That's black and gold. Yep. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful looking packaging and figure itself. Just a very well done. Yeah. On, you know, me just being a gushing GI Joe fan. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, some of, some of the biggest news coming out of for me, was like all of the, the Star Wars stuff. And and before we get too far into all of the things that they announced, I just want to say of all of these virtual cons that we've been around, you know, during this pandemic, this is the first time where we were getting announcements and announcements and announcements. And I was excited. Like we actually had announcements. Yeah, it <laughs> yes, it yes. mattered. It was news that mattered. Um, so starting with some Black Series, one of the first things they announced Funnily enough, and I want to hear what you guys think about this. We're finally getting a six inch black series Jar Jar Binks with lots wow. of accessories. <laughs> he comes with a shield and a spear yeah. and a little boom ball stick thing. I thought they were uh, burying Jar Jar. Uh, so, why would you put Jar Jar if you weren't trying to somehow? Re- you know, put a positive spin on something that you want to do in the future. It it Uh, certainly is positive because he has these weapon accessories. He has lots of weapon accessories. Because to be fair, I mean, you said the word Jar Jar and I just got annoyed. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I I, I can't. That's the only thing I think of because why would you put, why would you risk it? It almost seems like a risk, right? Because I mean, I would, I'll never buy that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys probably won't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, Jar Jar, no. Where's the market? Where's the market, I guess, for Jar Jar that that you can rationalize? We're going to give him his own figure and give him all these cool little things. Like, and it's a Uh, six inch figure. Yeah. Especially the Black Series, too, because that's aimed at adults. Mm -hmm. And Jar Jar was obviously a figure aimed at kids. And um, are these, are the kids that did like Jar Jar growing up, are they still Jar Jar fans? I don't think there's one out there, is there? I mean, I've, I've honestly seen, never met somebody. That I've said, seen a, oh, I've seen a, a handful of positive yeah. comments, you know, on on social media, but I, I'd imagine there's a certain limitation to that, um, you know. But there are certain collectors who a collect everything, and b, you know, they they put together scenes, and Jar Jar has certainly been missing from everything, you know. So. There, 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 there are people out there who want it. It just may not be too extensive, you know. 
Well, maybe it'll be like a short, limited run, you know? Yeah, and maybe then it'll, it'll be valuable. Maybe, uh, maybe Jar Jar will make a cameo in the Obi Wan series. Maybe they just like repurpose all the ones they didn't sell from like twenty years ago, and they're just trying to no. sell them again. <laughs> no, <laughs> these these kidding. sculpts are too good. Well, I, know, to, I know. To offset that, in that same set, there's a deluxe version of Boba Fett, and he not only has his rifle, but he has a version of his rifle that snaps apart. Kind of like when Luke hits it in Return of the Jedi on Jabba's sail barge, and it gets cut in half, and it looks like it's been chopped in half with a with a lightsaber. And there's a long uh, flamethrower piece, so you can make him shooting his flamethrower out of his gauntlet, uh, which is which is pretty nice. cool. Lots of Return of the Jedi poses here. So really interesting set there: Jar Jar and Boba Fett, two completely different ends of the like same spectrum there, right? Yeah, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. You want to try and make people complete sets by giving probably like one of the most beloved characters and one of the least received well, well characters. Yeah, yeah. So they they also announced the next wave of Black Series figures. So we got a we got a um, a uh, a flame trooper. Uh, a gen a gen one clone trooper or phase one clone trooper i should say and probably lance this is probably going to be one of your favorite uh figures too i i think they're doing dark side ray in yeah six I saw she's cool it's i tried cool. to i tried to pre-order her but she sold out like immediately so hopefully i can i can grab one when they come out because she doesn't actually come out for for a while i think it was like june or something yeah, I would like to see a lot of her 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 stuff coming out. Yeah, from the last movie, I mean. Well, they announced today that the next the next pops that they're gonna have Ray with two lightsabers, like the two blue lightsabers at the end of Return of the Sith. Ray with a yellow lightsaber, Ben oh, with cool. a blue lightsaber, and resurrected Palpatine. So the next wow. Star Wars pops are are gonna be really cool. That's cool. Uh, of course, we also got the armor. She already had a six inch figure, but there's a deluxe version of her with lots of accessories coming out. And then of course they announced the the repackages. We got a, a Thrawn in the uh the card back and bubble, which I, I have to have just because I I collect Thrawn. We got Commander Cody, uh Hoth Luke, Hoth Han, and that's the that's the set right there. And then possibly one of the st- stupidest sets of black series figures i've ever seen in my entire life funko pop level of unnecessary they did all of the troopers in christmas colors and sweaters and what you is know, this i know you don't like it i honestly i like it why no, no. it's this is not even from anything it's not about it. So to me, it has nothing to do with it being from anything. It's it's trying to get like the holiday spirit and like the kids into Star Wars more, where it's like, oh, like look at it. Like I don't know when I see it, I think they did a great job at like making it f- have a feeling of like Christmas. I know you don't like. I get not liking it as like someone who's like a fan. Like, oh, this is stupid. This has nothing to do with it. But at the same time, they do. I mean, they've done that with Marvel stuff already, and and I think that's stupid too. I get that. The the Funko but, Pops with the Christmas sweaters. Yeah. I want Thanos with an ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> That's it, not what I asked is, for. It is its own, you know, set because it's the holiday edition set. So if it, someone just doesn't want that set, they just don't get that set. There's a Porg with a scarf. He's got a candy cane gun. Like I said, I think it's pointed towards kids. I don't think it's like an adult. I like the, At least that's what I get out of. I like the Dio dressed as Rudolph. I just, yeah, I, I just now I, noticed that I, I as you were too. saying that. Yeah, because yeah. it's the it's got the range troopers, the Anna Claus. No, yeah. no. I don't, I, I like, <laughs> oh my gosh, there's Babu Frick in in a Christmas sweater. I didn't even see that. Oh my gosh, these little <laughs> accessories are ridiculous. Yeah, the scarf, the scarf on the yeah, snow trooper. The scarf. Mm-hmm. Come I think on. it's fun. You know, Blade, life's fun sometimes. You just got to loosen up a little bit. I'm, I, I'm loose, you know, like of there. 
there are several Star Wars characters that don't even have a, a Black Series figure yet, and we're bothering to repaint these 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 clone troopers and stormtroopers and the range trooper and the and the whatever else. Like, like no, no, nobody asked for this. I am I am adamant well, about that. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, you definitely know. nobody asked for it. But it's kind of I don't know. Well, you know what, Blade? Though the the good news is, right before all of those stormtrooper Christmas posts, uh-huh. there was the Grand Admiral Thrawn yeah. announcement yeah. for the action figure, which is yeah. totally got to make you feel better about all these Christmas stormtroopers. Yeah. It's a, it's a repackage of the of the original six inch, which I I already have two of, by the way, and I and I definitely oh, want yeah. it. I want it, uh, and, and that's the fiftieth. It's got a fiftieth anniversary uh, Lucasfilm card back, uh, which is kind of cool. So I love Thrawn. If there's if there's a Thrawn, you know, I I want it. Um, yeah, but I mean, it was it was a roller coaster between those two announcements because those were those were back to back there. Okay, but the next announcement after this was great. Oh my gosh, and I I almost pre ordered it and I waited just because I I wanted I just it, it doesn't come out for a while so and I'm and I'm torn. And Lance is referring to the Black Series. Force FX Ahsoka Tanu Elite Lightsaber. That's a mouthful. I don't even know if I said that in the right order. This is her Clone Wars lightsaber. I was going to say lightsaber based on the Clone Wars, and I just realized I screwed up that sentence. This is her (laughs) Clone Wars lightsaber, and apparently it switches from blue to green because in Season 7, she had a blue lightsaber because Anakin... uh, swapped her kyber crystals i i believe it was now this is just one lightsaber but it's cool because like the blade comes out the the pictures are really cool it's a really cool piece another thing stopping me from pre-ordering it is galaxy's edge just announced that they're doing this lightsaber too and it actually comes with the second saber because you know ahsoka has two lightsabers she has that second slightly shorter one and it also changes color so you're like torn like which one which one do I get, you know? Por que no los dos? I'm only going to get one set, you know, and I, I just really want to see the, the second saber with it. Because you, you guys know I, I have Star Wars lightsabers on my, uh, on our wall in our loft. Um, and yes. the, the the Elite series is really cool because the blades come out. So you can actually just have the hilt. So especially like if you're, if you cosplay, you're like wearing the 501st. So like we think it's, it's cool just to be able to like wear it. Uh, you know, on your belt and stuff. Because uh, the Revan is, the Darth Revan lightsaber is like that too. And they just announced a, a Darth Sidious lightsaber that's also like that. And I, I have to have that one, you know, and I want to like yeah. keep it up my There's sleeve. only one lightsaber that I, I want. Ray's lightsaber? Yeah. Ray's yellow lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I'm just waiting this, for that. That's the only one that lightsaber I'll buy. I can't believe it's taken this long to do it. Her and Leia's lightsaber, like, yeah. like where where are they? I know. I'll buy it in a second. Yeah. No. I don't even have to check my bank account. If there's money in there, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's it's most <laughs> overdrawn. Not easy. Yep. Oh, well. So next thing, I'm not, I'm not into these HasLab things just because they're expensive. I know we talked, what was that a few weeks ago or a few months ago about the, the HasLab Sentinel? Right. Yeah. It does. So, that was some- so they're doing the Razor Crest. Which is the the ship from the Mandalorian? It's cool, but it's just three hundred fifty dollars. It's so expensive. Yeah, that's it's just that's way too much. Yeah, especially <laughs> since like you know like does it do anything? You know what I mean? Like, like th- how does this thing not fly if I'm paying three hundred fifty dollars? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, I'm serious. No, like you could buy a drone now for like a hundred bucks, and you want me to buy this figure for three hundred fifty dollars, and it doesn't hover? Like, are you kidding me? You know what I, I'm saying? I can't argue with that. I don't know what to tell you. Like, what, how much money are you putting into this that, like, you're not even going to give me some type of functionality with this thing? There's a lot of detail, and there's, like, there's like a little weapons vault inside of it with all of his rifles oh and, and grenades. Whatever. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not justifying. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying what's in there. I'm it is honest, expensive. It, it is expensive. expensive. And some of these things, Where though, you- that these these big ones that are like three hundred fifty dollars. It's almost getting to a point though, where as someone who wants these things but like doesn't really want to put that much money into like just doing that, mm. it makes me think, man, 
I can just, maybe I'll just get a 3D printer and make my own figures. And because like at, at the cost of what it's costing, it's just like at this point, it, the long run might cost me less. Yeah. What were you saying, Ken? Now, is this for three and three quarter inch? Is this for three and three quarter inch or six yeah. inch figures? Three and three quarter. Good God. Now, I could see for like a six inch black series. Do you know I mean? Because that would be freaking huge. Six what inch would be six huge. Figures? Huge. And then like maybe 350 for that. But this is for three and 3.75, three yeah. three and quarter figures. It's still pretty big. I mean, um, it looks huge for three and three quarter inch here. So that's what I was wondering. Going, good God. It's 30 Wait. inches by 20 inches by 10 inches. How big is the Millennium Falcon in relation? Is this thing bigger than the Millennium Falcon? No. No, you mean like in actual, quote, actual ship size? Yeah, because this thing no, is significantly, it, significantly smaller. Yeah. I don't think, would a Millennium Falcon cost 350 bucks? I at mean, this I scale? No, at, at this yeah. scale, a Millennium Falcon would have oh. to be like a grand. That's think what about, I'm saying. Think about how big they fit in that little cockpit on the side of the Falcon and look at him in the cockpit of the ship and like think about the scale of that. The most know? expensive Millennium Falcon for 3.75 inch I've seen ever on the market at retail was 250 That was one that came out about, I want to say about six or seven years ago for huh. the same type of collection. Yeah. Which collection. Wow. Wow. And it had the LED lights on it. It was the most mm-hmm. deluxe Millennium Falcon they ever released. Wow. It's supposed to be 350. Is there any LED lights on it? You know, I don't, gonna, I don't know. I mean. Going to come with like a, a group of family, maybe Yodas? I mean, what's going to be included with that? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the child. Uh, I mean, it met its backers. So, I mean, that's, that's all they uh, needed. I'm glad they have that money. All right. Well, yeah. well Dude, how big? What? But I put two. It's just it's and this has lab stuff. I mean, what's is there a production limitation on it? How many are being produced? Oh, Can I, I say th- that at all. Well, I think you have to you have to do the um the pre order. You know, like the the Kickstarter or whatever to get one. Yes. So there's. So yeah, so they met. It was six thousand backers, I think. So, in okay. fairness, I guess to these people that are deciding to throw three hundred fifty dollars onto this, at least they know it's a limited amount. It's so there's going to be some value in the fact that there's only like six thousand, seven thousand of them. Mm-hmm. So I guess there's that. It's not like it's, this is being mass produced and there's like you know. 20 to 30,000 of them, right? At the time of recording, there are 7,620 backers. Wow. Okay. And all those people get one because... Limit of five per here, transaction. <laughs> wow. wow. So, it could be up, so you can get up to 35,000 of these made if yeah. everyone ordered five of them. Well, I, I mean, that's there's currently 7,620 orders for these. Right, so, but they could be wow. five. They could be five each. Is what he's what is saying. No, uh, no, because I think each backer oh, is okay. one. Is one. Oh, you know oh, I mean? okay. um, so so I think one backer can get. Can get five. So I mean, you okay. you have to you have to drop a lot of money if you wanted to to get five. Um, yeah. it's cool, but it's crazy. But I mean, hey, yes, if you like it, that's cool. Nothing Something I saw that. much more for than the three hundred and fifty dollar Mandalorian ship mm-hmm. is did you see the bill that Joe fix it? Yes, that's Marvel a Legend. that's a really cool series. So yeah. yes, we're getting we're getting Mr. Fix It, which which are are we gonna get him in the She Hulk series? Like this is what Marvel does. Like so. they they pop up like this is like this is my favorite Hulk. He looks awesome as a figure. And, and we already, like, we've already kind of gotten him in the movies, right? Because we, we've gotten him as just sitting in a in a cafe, right? Eating a sandwich. Well, that was more Professor Hulk. This, this no, is I like know, I know, Vegas I know. I'm just bodyguard, saying, you know. I know. I'm just saying that they, that they have kind of shown that we can have a Hulk who understands, like, yes, people. Yes. And, mm-hmm. 
yeah. with the design details on the figure. I mean, it's dude, it's dressed to the T. Yeah, his black and white wingtip look even epic uh-huh. on this thing, dude. Yep. I mean, I'm going, dude. It's like how much detail the tie just slightly off to his side. You know the way they designed, rather than a straight tie, yeah. it's, yeah. it's Joe Fix. Man. Yeah. His uh, fedora is just prime, dude. It just looks. This looks epic. This is usually I don't buy the whole set for a build a figure. Mm-hmm. This is a build a figure set that I would get just for Joe Fix It. One of the I mean, one of the coolest is, for sure. Yes, the detail on the face even on mm-hmm. it is just. It looks like it looks like a comic book character come to life, dude. It's just it's epic on that. The best I, sculpts I've ever seen. I will say I wish he had more of his Hulk gray skin, but I think they're yeah. they're pushing yeah, it like this for a reason. You're probably right. I said, too, that She-Hulk show. I mean, how cool would it be that She-Hulk goes to Vegas? Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope that's what happens. Oh, Lance, what do you think about this new Tony Stark? I don't, I'm not familiar with this, this blue armor here. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a raving review from, from Lance here. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not sold on that. Interestingly enough. The cap looks- it's kept, yeah. I was just gonna say it's Captain America from the Square Enix Marvel Avengers game. Is it? Yeah. Look at his look at his outfit. He's wearing like all black. Is that not U.S. Agent? Mm-hmm. That's a good observation. I was kind of wondering why he was all black too, as well. In the armor uh, there, of course. It's still here. and Joe Casta showing up. Is she going to be in Scarlet Witch? Joe Vision Casta Scarlet is the Witch? is the best part of this. Like, is, are they going to finally use her? Yeah, well, awesome. she's already They're been in the Mar- she's already been in the MCU, right? Oh, yep. you're right. Yep. When in Age of Ultron, when Tony Stark he's he's uh creating Ultron with um with uh Bruce Banner on one of the discs on on his desk, Jocasta is written on it. Oh, right, right, right. So there's already um references to the character. Or, you know, what if um what if in one of the what ifs or or Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, what if it's Jocasta that gets made instead of Ultron and they come across would, that reality? I was also thinking, you know, because of another character that's in this figure, in, in this thing, what if it's Kang who brings Jocasta? Interesting. For, you know, from the future or something. Yeah. Very interesting. Because the the Kang figure, this is really cool. I like how they they kept his old classic look. Yep, it's very 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 well done. What's also interesting? I mean, so we got Falcon, and we know where he fits into the to the future of things, right? And we know we know Kang, but they did. Oh my gosh, his name is escaping me. Thunderstrike. Thank you, Thunderstrike. Yeah. That was I, interesting. I saw that yeah. too. And Who so. is is this? So this is what we're thinking. Maybe Thor ends up becoming Thunderstrike once uh, they take. He gets his hammer basically taken away from him by uh, by female Thor. Well, well, Thunderstrike's his own character. So maybe he does. He go off on an adventure, and he Millioner gets remade, and someone else becomes Thor on Earth. Which is Thunderstrike. No, when he take when he takes Stormbreaker. Well, originally, if I remember correctly, Thunderstrike had Millioner, but then he did such a good job, uh, Odin gave him his own hammer. Isn't that right? I believe so, yes. Ken, do you know? I do not know too much about Thunderstrike, unfortunately, on that one, dude. Okay, it says it says it's Captain America. Yeah, Captain America game figure. So I don't know why his costume is black. Oh, okay. So it, it's Captain America. So some kind of variant of of that figure. Uh, really makes you Thunder Strike is kind of an obscure character, I think. Yeah, it's something that I thought that they would never bother never do. with doing. Yeah, because it's kind of like I don't know a cheesy Thor. I don't I don't know how to describe it. Like it's like. I don't know. He's like the triple H of Thor's. Right. (laughs) Like you always thought if there wasn't Thor, that the person that would take Thor's place would be like Beta Ray Bell. Yeah. 
right? Because yep. it's like, you know, he's worthy and he's completely different. Mm-hmm. Showcast was already sold out on Hasbro Pulse's website. Wow. So I can't even buy a complete Mr. Fix-It. Uh, well, they're not out yet, so there'll, there'll be more chances. That's true. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be listed probably through regular outlets besides Hasbro Pulse, too. Right. Thunder Strikes I mean, Hammer, which is not a hammer. It's a mace. Are you ready for this name? I'm ready. Thunder yes, Strike. Wow. Oh, of course. <laughs> right. And on it is a great <laughs> right. On it on it it says the world still needs heroes, Thunderstrike. Yeah, so... I've never been interested in the character, which is really strange. When even when he came out originally, yeah. it's like he was just uh, I don't know, like a Thor's little brother, it felt like when he he's was like, first introduced. Thunderstrike. He's like, he's like biker Thor. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, biker Thor. Yeah. And with all due respect to Thunderstrike fans, I mean, hey, anybody out there listening, enlighten us about the greatness of Thunderstrike because uh, he's been in the dark for way too long as a hammer wielder that uh, is part of this Thor Marvel legend, legend universe. And if I understand, is I might be wrong, but I think he died at the end of his story. Is he still alive? I don't think so. I think he's probably he probably is dead. Well, in here it says something about current owner, a different Masterson. So I'm assuming, I don't know if that's his son or or what. So you, so you might be right. He oh Kevin like Masterson. you were saying. Okay, well, like you were saying with Joe Casta thing, this could just be a, a multiverse thing. That's true. Oh yeah. I could be pulling him from another multiverse and it's like Thunderstrike and Thor's going to be like, you're so lame. You, you know how, you, so like, you know, there's no reliable <laughs> sources uh, reporting it, but you know, there are those rumors that, you know, Marvel characters that have already appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, other actors are going to be playing them in alternate realities. And like the, the big, the big rumor was, you know, Tom Cruise as Iron Man. Yeah, so, give me a break. <clears throat> So maybe they'll they'll do like you know Thunderstrike in that universe, and it'll be someone just as bad, you know, I mean, to cast like I, Triple H or something. You know? I mean, casting Triple H for Thunderstrike would be probably just as bad as ca- casting Tom Cruise as Iron Man, That's so, what I mean. or Tom so just, Cruise as anybody in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So just go for it, unless he's like Impossible Man or something stupid. Oh gosh. No, I like I like you picked someone for Impossible Man once, and I and I loved it. Yeah, I can't I don't remember, remember who. Um, man, this is a really cool wave, and I think that this wave has a lot of implications for the future of the MCU. So, like, I would just say, like, watch out for those characters. Like, those are the first appearances to look out for right now, right? Yeah, yes. so definitely. Intro cast those first appearances. Definitely something to look out for. Mm. I have enough of them though, so I don't need any more. I can just, I'm picturing in my head like Lance's room with the stockpiles of first appearances <laughs> and he's sitting in like a chair of first appearances. I don't need any more of these. <laughs> these are a diamond. You couldn't live with your own. Like the film. market is on mm-hmm. like The collector is like a, is, a, is jealous of the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the stacks yep. that are at Lance's house. <laughs> so awesome. awesome. Also in the Marvel Legends series, I guess, um, even though these are the prop replicas, they finally announced a new prop replica for the Marvel Legends set, and it's Stormbreaker. How cool is that? Super cool. And the fact that it like, like glows, like rainbow colors, that's pretty mm. cool. I think it's over four feet now, long. Is that... Yeah. Is that piece of Groot as the handle yeah. to yeah. on that. I'm going, that yeah. looks freaking awesome. Going, remember that being from something that's the movie Stormbreaker, yes. correct? Then? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. real Stormbreaker or comic book Stormbreaker is actually kind of small and it's and it's gold. So it's, yeah, I don't even know if you'd say it's gold. I think it's bronze. Is it? I always I always thought it was like gold, gold. This Stormbreaker is to me is more of Ultimate Thor's hammer. Right, it is. It's a combination of the two. They yeah. kind of just put the two together. Yeah, that's that's what it really is. Um, but I'm Super cool I'm in. I'm in. It's a little more expensive than the usual hundred dollar 
um, props that they do. This one I think is is it one fifty or one fifty nine. Um, but it'll look one fifty nine. Yeah, I thought I thought that's what I said. But it's gonna look really Got good it. next to Mjolnir and Cap Shield and the Infinity Gauntlet. And and for yep. you, uh, Iron Man's helmet, right? And Black Panther's helmet. And Black Panther's helmet. Yes, very cool. And Iron Man's love the uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Yes. I, love I have the a demo of the guy. What you say, Ken? The demo. I love the demo. The guy wielding the two hammers together. Oh, oh, yes, yes. I can't <laughs> wait to do that. So dramatic. So. Bring me Thanos. <laughs> yep. I, I think it was a good idea by whoever was like. Yep. The what? I think it was a good idea by whoever like directed that because like it gives you a, a feel of like what it looks like you know like if you if you have Mjolnir you know that like it's it's a little bigger like you feel you're like oh I want to buy this because it's it looks it looks like it's a lot bigger or it's a proper you know portions proportions as you guys. And this is the only one where you get a living arm of somebody. The, yes. only, the only what? You can grow your own fruit with it. <laughs> you can grow so your own fruit. Oh, that's <laughs> yes. funny. That's funny. You like a whittling knife, and you can start your own group, your own group collection. That's funny. Does Does this mean we're going to get eventually a Winter Soldier arm? I would love that. <laughs> you can I would love that. You cut off your own arm to attach it. <laughs> Steve, that feels go. so good. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't work right, guys. I really try. <laughs> and I really can't control it with my own nervous system. This is not working the way I planned. <laughs> it would have been funny after he dusted, his arm got left there, and then like Rocket takes it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, know, dude. I wouldn't be surprised if that was if that was part of the thought process and they thought it was too light for the moment. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would have killed it. Like you're all like, you're like shocked at like half half of the Marvel superheroes got killed, and then, and then Rocket's like, "Oh, well, I got the arm." <laughs> but to be fair, his arm. Why did his arm disappear? Like, why did their clothes disappear? Then you know, where do you draw the line? You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So they also announced a bunch of GI Joe stuff, and I honestly, I I don't even know what these are. Can can speak <laughs> better to this? Uh, I guess these are six inch GI Joes. Yes. Earlier this year, G.I. Joe dropped the Classified series, which is six-inch scale G.I. Joes. So it's their Marvel yeah, Legends and Black G. Series, right? Yes, absolutely. It's like that equivalent to the Star Wars Black Series and the Marvel Legends series. Six-inch scale of Marvel Legends. It's, uh, it's, uh, it started off with just being four figures, and this year's not already over. I think they've announced a total of 16 figures already. Wow. And uh, there's going to be uh, more Target exclusives, which uh, kind of drive the fans nuts because the bots yep. are allowed to eat up all the stock at the yep. Target website again. Yep. So it's funny. You go to the Target website and you look at these items that are already sold out and they're already one-star items because the fans just mm-hmm. blow up Target yep. for having such a poor system to purchase the items. Yep. And it's uh, they, uh, they're really cool. I mean, they did Firefly and Cobra Vipers, which are the Cobra Soldier Troopers of the second generation mm-hmm. of uh, G.I. Joe figures that uh, look like they have a Cobra Commander mask, but they have more as the army fatigue still. Yeah. And uh, God was on top of a Cobra Commander mask. And Firefly, Cobra Saboteur, I'm sure, if you guys saw the G.I. Joe movie, he's the guy that more or less jumped his motorcycle into a building. Inside the G.I. Joe, I think it's Retaliation, the second movie with The Rock. I, but, I haven't uh, seen either of them, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, if you get a chance and want to waste two hours of your day, <laughs> if you're not G.I. Joe, um, definitely give it a watch. I mean, it's definitely not the worst movies ever produced, but they're nowhere near Academy Awards either. Yeah. And uh, But uh, the G.I. Joe stuff is really on fire right now with fans, and uh, especially the six-inch line. They also announced... Uh, Walmart exclusives of Wave 2, the 3.75 vintage-looking series, where they released Scarlet, Destro, and um, Roadblock as the second wave of the 3 and 3 series. Sorry, my dog is uh, having fits in the background, playing with a ball. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, 
I apologize about the the sound of the dying bird back there. <laughs> but that is her ball that she is uh, having like a. Do you ever see like dogs on catnip or like cats on catnip? I see that. Like how my dog on catnip, yes. Yeah, dude. She'll like just all of a sudden get this urge of energy just to throw her ball around as fast as possible yes. and just tackle it. Like it is something that is invading her space. And she's just having one of those fits right now. So I apologize about the extra awesome. noise in the background. But nope. Love funny it. To listen to. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, there is going to be mass market GI Joe's too, as well. The six inch lines. They are also doing Zartan and a uh, second Cobra officer soldier. Okay. And so uh, Zartan, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Zartan, but Zartan's a master of disguise. And it's going to be fun to see what accessories uh, they include with Zartan. I can almost, he's, he's one of those guys that's born to be a deluxe figure mm. where they'll probably do a secondary release of him down the line with more disguises to put on yeah. for, for Zartan. But uh, it's the first edition Zartan, so I wouldn't be surprised to see secondary Zartan figures like they did three Cobra Commanders okay. in the first six months of the release of these figures, which kind of blows me away that Cobra Commanders got more wardrobes than Michael Jordan, it seems like, but that's yeah. a Cobra Commander for you, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they did some retro figures. Are these, are they supposed to be like the old ones or are they, are they resculpted? Yeah. Yeah. The fans kind of felt they dropped the ball on this line because it is, new sculpts the newer sculpts but mm -hmm. with the retro looking cards like Mar hasbro's done really well with their star wars retro line to make it look like the original 70s series and the ghostbuster figures look like the original 80s series mm -hmm. the transformers they put out look like the original vintage collection or vintage look stuff but the gi joe stuff they want to put you a new figure in an old packaging system and the fans are kind of like, well, why can't you get everything else right, but you can't do this with GI Joe for us? Hmm. And so there is uh, these are still three and fan base for it, but the three point seven five ones, yeah, the vintage collection are three okay. three quarter. Okay. And uh, but the classified ones are the ones that are six inch. They're, it's called the yeah. classified yeah. line. Yeah. Or classified series. But the <laughs> the the retro ones are three and a three quarter inch size. Because I and did really on classic card. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna Go say I good. I really liked the uh, six inch vintage card back figures they did for Marvel that looked like the Secret Wars yeah. card backs and like they had nice sculpts to them and I thought that was cool. Yes, I'm I'm sure over time you're probably gonna see that through the six inch line too. Yeah. Because I mean. Uh, Hasbro's just trying to reinvigorate G.I. Joe. Yeah. And I think it's the long enough after. Um, sounds weird. Like G.I. Joe kind of had to be very uh, touchy after September 11th because Cobra is a terrorist organization. Mm. And it's, uh, I think, enough times past now where they feel like it's okay to tell the fictionalized story yeah. of a domestic terrorist group called Cobra. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I can see that. But uh, there was a, a long period of time where. The uh, Cobra organization was a taboo thing to do for kids' toys. Interesting. And um, I think that's uh, now that they're seeing such a success, and it seems like they're not really aiming this at kids, they're aiming it at the adult collector too yeah. as well, I noticed. Yeah. I don't see a huge pool for kids buying G.I. Joe figures still. But, well, and it's it's um, smart of, it's smart of Hasbro to realize that, you know? Yes. Yeah, so these are completely aimed at the adult collector more than I would. Mm. Uh, even though they are in kids' toy departments, at Targets and at Walmarts. Yeah. It's more aimed towards us than it is towards kids. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no adult section for, for it at Target and Walmart, which yeah. is which is okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time I go to Target, I, yeah. I go to the toy aisle. I'll, I'll, I'll admit it. It is funny. They do have the hobbyist aisle, though, over by the electronics sections now over at Target. They you know, like where the Funko Pops hang oh, out, oh, and they have, yeah, like, the yeah. Predator action mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So yep. there is like slowly yeah, evolving an adult collectible toy section inside of some stores recently. Yeah, no, that's that's an interesting point. I never really thought about it like that. I always just, I always just kind of thought of it as like where they needed to put their pops, you know. Um, yeah. So I don't know what Zoids are, so I'm just gonna kind of 
gloss over that. Do, that you, was, do you know what that is? Yeah, that was, yeah, was kind of like a 1980s wind up oh. little dinosaur toys. And they were, you know, oh. they were more deluxe type of, uh, I guess you would say dinosaur slash mutated dinosaur robot stories. I don't know too much about them, but I remember mm-hmm. seeing commercials for them as a kid. They were kind of like uh, wind up toys that would walk on the tables and zoids. Yeah. Stuff. I'm not. Kind of another thing they tried pushing out back in the 80s. Then I see we got Optimus Primal coming out and doing some Beast Wars, um, Hades Megatron, uh, Red, uh, Prime, Ar- is it Ar- Archie Beast? RC Beast? I don't know. A Cheetor, which we were just talking about before the stream. Yeah. Uh, that figure looks awesome. I was yeah. really impressed with that. Yeah, Cheetor is cool. Um, we got uh, the Ghostbusters car. I'm yes, not a, I'm not a awesome Ghostbusters too, guy, but it's cool. Figure. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, Did you see the Marvel Comics Presents three and three quarter inch vintage figures? Yeah, the, the two pack. Yeah, the two packs. Yeah, those. Look, the packaging on those. Look, they look awesome. I want to buy them. I so like I I skipped through those because like I don't understand what they are. It looks like a flat cereal box, so They're, I don't. I don't understand. Yeah. They're just for the retro collector. I mean, once again, it's aimed at us again. I mean, okay. I don't see how many kids are going to be buying them. Yeah. And this is kind of an interesting thing, too, is, I mean, I guess this, this whole Hasbro PulseCon is aimed at the more mature collector, if you think about it. Oh, here. yeah, 100%. Because there's no, like, real major Hasbro mass market toy announcements here, correct? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Like, there's no My Little Pony. There's no Nerf information. I mean, there's that Ghostbuster Nerf gun. Mm-hmm. That was kind of cool. But there's... This 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 whole convention weekend was aimed at us rather than parents. Isn't We're that kind of interesting? We're the ones with the you mean like that. It, does Hasbro do anything that aims towards the parents of kids? Anymore? Well, well, they do, but they do don't. Have, mean, like, they don't have to announce it at a convention. They just need to stick it on the shelves or make a TV commercial. Like they don't. They don't do conventions to sell to kids. They they make these big toy announcements to sell to adults. You sell the kids in different ways. But aren't they? Aren't they missing the target kid audience now? Because there's no cartoons on TV anymore. Do you know I, what I mean? It's like now it's like on Netflix. They they watch they watch Netflix they watch Hulu like there's there's cartoons on there they did that I, Voltron uh, I, I think that there isn't a market right now for that age group in my opinion I think there's the market for like little children who are four five six seven years old who want to play with like little things and then kids today are nine years old and they have smartphones and they play on their smartphone and it's more fun than an action figure because they don't really want to have an imagination type thing. And, and, and just how kids are growing up today. I think that's, I think that's where like the, the difference is coming is like, there's either, there's either action figures for little, little kids or there's action figures geared towards like adults like us where we're collectors. We grew up with this stuff. We love these we love the the stories of these characters and and, and if it works for a kid they out. can get that too right and if it works for a kid cool then then they can buy it too but i think i think that's really what it is i think they they finally have figured out like their target market is this so they're going to push for that and if the kids want it they can have it that's what that's my feeling at least but does that pose a problem long term to the hasbro toy industry that they're more aiming towards an aging demographic rather than towards kids products that because why we're so excited about this stuff that's going on right now mm. is because it was aimed at us as kids yeah so what new products is hasbro developing to attract kids attention because as this market ages out what's going to be their next generation of products that they'll be all fawning over having played with as a kid that's brand new to them to, to me I mean? it would be more of like the the cool stuff that they've done with like the replicas, like the Thor's hammer and like the Iron Man, Sh- Captain America's shield. I think maybe those things could be, you know, if you, if you, you don't have to make them worth a hundred dollars, right. You can make them 
almost like dumbed down a little. So that way you would be something that you'd want to buy for kids. Almost like when they came out with the Spider-Man, you know, when we were, me and you, Blade, were little, they had the Spider-Man little uh, it's the shoot web, web, shooter. web yeah. shooters, right? Like things like that yeah. that I think are more tangible. Do you know what I mean? Like some, some, some things have more interactive, more use. And I think I think with the, like you said with the the figures aimed at really little kids like the you know like the superhero squad you know like the things like that and the you know the dopier looking figures with vehicles and stuff I think like the hope is to get them interested early so you can play to their nostalgia later yeah. you know because I just see something this is something that Mattel does a heck of a lot better than Hasbro. Okay. It sounds weird saying that. I mean, with all due respect to Hasbro, I love their products. Their their product lines are the best product lines in toys at this moment. But Mattel started Hot Wheels back in 1968. Wow. What little kid is not excited to see a Hot Wheel when they go to a grocery store today? Yeah. Or to, do you know what I mean? Like that Barbie dolls, to this day, starting back in the 1950s, there's still little girls that want the Barbie dolls when they go to the store. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? No. And it's still something that both adults and kids equally enjoy. Yeah. With the Hasbro stuff, they're not marketing to kids. They're marketing just to us. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And and I kind of wonder like that. What? Why someone inside of Hasbro marketing is not doing that same type of attention towards the next generation of collectors? Mm-hmm. They're just aiming at the collectors of yesteryear. They're not aiming at the collectors of tomorrow. Well, and, and I think I think part of it too is probably exactly what what Lance said is just the thing with video games and stuff. And and what really helps close that gap a little is all you have to do is market these to adults, and then the kids will find them because these are these are cool. Like if I was a kid, yes, and I saw this Green Ranger figure, I, I would be all about it. You know. Um, it's just having them there and available because you make them work for the adults and it's, it's okay for the, for the kids too. Um, but if kids aren't getting access to them because the adults are gobbling them up, true. you're still not pulling in that audience. Oh, then they need to pay attention to what they're selling and how much they need to produce, you know, versus what the market demands. Yeah. You know? Like they're doing it really well with Marvel right now. They have those like 12 Spider-Man you know that, oh, that yeah. Marvel, and those are you know, the, like the kids. Those line. are the really little kids' version of it. Yeah, Lots. four yes. points of articulation. And like, yeah, and those like need to be. You know, I said too, like more stuff like because I think that's the one thing Hasbro's doing right for kids uh-huh. is like these larger than life carry around action figures yeah. that both girls and boys can mm-hmm. equally play with. Yeah, because there's like Spider Gwen doll, there's Ghost mm-hmm. Spider, there's Venom, there's Spider Man, yeah. there's Carnage even mm-hmm. like a kid Carnage figure. Whoever thought we would see that? Right? Yeah, but it's out there, and kids don't think of Carnage as this. Um, how would you say like serial killer? Yeah. that wears a symbiote. They just think of this Carnage. Yeah, Same with like guy. Venom. So you know what I mean as well. Like, yeah. yeah, and so it's um, it's something that they they have a little bit of attention on, but I just think there's so much more attention on us than there is on kids right now in Hasbro. And that's kind of surprising to me Fair for enough. the future of Hasbro. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll, and maybe I mean, that's just, yeah. Like my little pony, something else, I guess they do really well for the girls too as well. Mm-hmm. That's their, their kids line for kids. Maybe is my little pony and the, the Marvel, you know, action figure dolls for kids mm-hmm. on there. But I just, I'm a big fan of Hasbro and I just don't want to see them age out their, their, their population where they get into a financial issue of like that. Oh man, dude, these collectors are all of a sudden gone. So, you know, it's like, what happened to them? You know, they, they have all the best licenses and everything. Like I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You know, they've been, they've been this smart this far. Um, you know, they'll, they'll figure it out, you know, as they go and, you know, what licenses in the future may or may not be popular because i mean right now i mean look at this power ranger stuff they're announcing you know like this is this is for my generation you know we're we're adults yes. now and you know we're doing all of this mighty morphin power ranger stuff and now look this this next uh zord they're doing is zeo which is after a few years 
that Mighty Morphin was out. They did the Power Rangers Zeo Rangers. And I, and I actually had the, I think it was the Zeo Zord um, when I was a kid too, before I kind of stopped being interested in it. So they're going to, they can keep doing this Power Ranger stuff as, you know, as kids get older and they want the toys, you know, that they, they have when they're yeah. a kid, like they can, they're on this pace to do the different Power Ranger stuff. Do they, do they have a line that's designed for the kids more as age group for Power Rangers? You know, I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't keep up with the current Power Ranger stuff. Um, I mean, I, I see Power Ranger stuff on the shelf that I don't know what it is. You know, I'm sure it's, okay. I'm sure it's and newer things. And there's so many new Power Ranger kid shows. Oh, and there, there is, there is a, uh, actually there is, oh, um, stuff for young kids like you know you said the the larger 12 inch figures like spider-man stuff they just did some mighty morphing power rangers that are like really badly sculpted but they're like these big you know poorly articulated figures that are meant their shoulder their shoulders are weird because it's clearly meant to throw green ranger paint on it to make the green ranger because he's got a different shoulder set so everyone has weird looking shoulders so that way they can all just have the same mold you know, so so yeah, that, like that's they're what they're doing for young kids. Hmm. And they're doing with Transformers too, with like the bigger, brighter colored, bulkier, harder to break Transformers too, as well. I've mm-hmm. seen out in the marketplace too, mm-hmm. as well. Then yeah. like the the Star Wars little deformed figures. So I guess they are trying hard to make sure the kids keep up with it too. I was just just something that came to my mind that was going like, wow, they put all this energy into marketing to us. Uh, where are they doing their marketing for their kids? part of it for the kids too is um, the cartoons and, you know, clone yeah. wars rebels. And they, they were just doing like these really small figures of clone wars figures, like Ahsoka was in there and Rex and they're, they're like those thicker, you know, superhero squad, you know, kind of style figures. I, I bought the Ahsoka one just because I, I want to have every uh, Ahsoka thing. Uh, but those are, yes. those are really young uh, target demographic for, for those. So, I mean, like, as long as they they keep putting out those, you know, cartoons and stuff, you know, like like Clone Wars and Rebels, I don't know if The Mandalorian really counts, um, but, you know, it's just about putting out that media, I guess, you know, I mean, we know this whole time, it's the shows that sold the toys, right? You know, it's just, yes. just got to keep that going. Uh, last thing, I'll just quickly touch on it, is they, they did some Lightning Collection, Power Rangers, the six inch. Uh, red Dino Dino Ranger. I'm not familiar with the Dino Rangers. They did a metallic Mighty Morphing Pink Ranger, and they had a Cat's Head. Uh, yes. The most exciting figures, though, is that they're doing a Z, uh, Lord Zed Putty, and they're releasing, you know, an open edition of the mm-hmm. of the Green Ranger, the evil Green Ranger here, which, uh, which I'm excited to get my hands on. Because I'm not mistaken, we've only had uh, like a Senio Comic Con exclusive of the Green Ranger in this collection. Um. So I'm excited to to have one of those there. But man, PulseCon 2020 was just filled with, with stuff. I mean, for everybody, you know? It's almost like a Christmas catalog of goodness. No that kidding. That seemed like that was just during this week. Yeah. Because like, as I said, dude, like, it's making me feel like a kid again. It's going back mm-hmm. on that topic is like, this is the greatest announcement of convention information i heard all year long yeah i mean the dc fandom's a close second but hasbro pulse when it comes to actually product that's being produced Mm. rather than just you know dc fandom talking about how awesome things are going to be i would argue this is is actual stuff that we're physically seeing yeah that is easy to digest yep of what we're gonna get so well done in my opinion you you know what it is like we know what the six inch figures look like feel like you know like they would really have to blow this you know like they're they're gonna be fine you know and they're they're gonna be great yeah and i'm gosh my my wallet was like hiding from me this weekend <laughs> i know dude it's uh yeah yeah hasbro's making a lot of money this week let's put it that way yep so there's also all of these house of x marvel legends we got white magneto which is super cool you got Professor X with his helmet thing, and he's standing. Moira, inter- yes, interestingly Rita. enough, right? Because we know Moira is is a mutant, right? 
Um, yes. Right. What is that silver she's surfer? The re- and why? Yes, she's the reincarnation of herself, right? Uh, why is Silver Surfer holding the owner? Can anybody explain that to me? I don't know. Is that is that a new thing, or did that happen? Is that from Silver Surfer Black or something, or when Donny Cates is writing Thor right now? I haven't read Thor the Silver Surfer Black. Black. I really want to. I, I have some of those. At least one. Um, Dormammu. And comic book Dormammu at that. You know, that that could very well be a sign of things that come. I think I have the first appearance of Dormammu. I do as well. But I mean, he's already in the MCU, right? Myers- yeah, he is. It's in Doctor Strange. It's like you know? Oh, the Hand Ninja. That's cool. And he comes with Stiltman stilts. Yeah, so build a stilt, man. That's awesome. And it looks like he can go up to six feet tall. Spider Gwen cool. comes with a little spider hand. Oh, so lame. Did you see that? It's oh. the spider It's the movie spider Ham. Yeah, yeah. And now I see these vintage <laughs> figures here. I didn't see them before. I see those figures inside those boxes. Um, and also looks like there's a Toys R Us. Toys R Us Canada, excuse me, slash Target exclusive Gambit and Rogue, who of course is missing from the retro six inch line. I like how they show what the classic one looks like right next to the new one, which is kind of cool too. The David Nakayama art on the new one. Oh, I didn't see these pictures. Yes, that is really cool. I have that Gambit in the other room. Yeah, these 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 classic figures are really cool. cool. Really, they're super. They're going to look good displayed next to each other, too, you know? Yeah, I think between, like, I think it's cool to have, like, to have, like, a cl- uh, comic book accurate, you know, Thanos and Dormammu with these classic looking figures. Like, you can make, like, your own little fight scene with so many, like, authentic comic book looking characters. And I love that Thanos' Thanos's hand is, his two fingers are together for the for the snap there. You know, with the Infinity Gauntlet, that's a that's a really neat touch. Uh, and of course, the final tease for the Marvel Legends was Firestar, which yeah. is cool. I mean, what a classic, fun character! Spider Man and his amazing friends, and she was made for that, right? I believe yeah, so. She, yeah, she was the original Harley Quinn character made for just the cartoon, yeah. and um. They integrated her into the Marvel Universe shortly afterwards, about actually seven years, no, five to six years later, because I want to say Spider-Man's Amazing Friends started in 1979 or was it 81? I'll have to check my, my, my sources on that, but I think it's like 79 or 80. And then X-Men 193 came out, I think 1985. So about uh, between five and seven years later. It was 81. 81? Okay, so about four years later then. So, like, yeah, Firestar, um, since Jean Grey was already dead, if I, probably the reasoning behind this, and there was kind of a hybrid between Jean Grey and Mary Jane Watson, because Mary Jane didn't have any powers, Yeah. but they made uh, Firestar an X-Man inside the cartoon. Interesting. And, like, her and Iceman were retired X-Men. Huh. And just became roommates with Peter Parker inside that cartoon. Because huh. there was a couple episodes where they went to revisit the X-Men, which I thought was pretty cool. That is cool. All right. Anything else you want to touch on before we wrap this up? I think I'm done. I think this is good. Cool. Well, I think that's about just all the time. That Hades. Oh, the Hades uh, Megatron? Yes. Even that's getting my, uh, you know, the my hair standing on end a little bit. Because yeah. I don't even know what that vehicle is, but that Megatron robot looks epic. Yeah. Uh, Transformers Prime. I think I think it's from that Transformers Prime show, right? Isn't that on Netflix? Okay. Could be wrong. Yeah, where they're still on uh, Cybertron? Yeah, I don't know. The War for Cybertron type of thing they're doing? I have no idea. <laughs> You're lucky you got that out of me for, for Transformers. 
It is. It is cool mm-hmm. though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's yeah, just yeah. about all the time we have for today. This is actually longer than I thought it was going to be, but that's that's kind of par for the course with us, I think. Here, just got one more thing to say. Yeah, yeah. at least we ended before May. Yes, yes. Uh, at least yes. we ended before May. <laughs> yes, it's we did, we did. We, and just to throw, just to say one more thing, because I, I know we kind of didn't say it, and I feel like it just wasn't said. But Black Widow isn't the only like Black Widow was postponed to May, but all the other movies too were also pushed back. Just so, just so we're clear, it's not just all oh, Black Widow was pushed back to May. Everything else was also pushed yes. back. Yeah. So to past just, May, yeah, past May. So yes, yeah. much to our dismay. So Black Widow is still ahead of schedule. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, oh man. All right. Now that we've derailed again, thank you all so much for, for listening and taking the time to like, share and subscribe. Uh, you know, if you do enjoy the podcast, you know, give us a share on social media, leave those reviews on platforms, like especially iTunes. Um, yeah, it's like that. Uh, so thanks again, everybody for community. We did have some, Pretty awesome news that was passed by us this week too. That uh, New Times did do their best of Phoenix announcement. Yes, I week. saw that. Congratulations. Yes, and Drama Comics is the 2020 Best of Phoenix comic shop, which was pretty exciting to news to get this past Wednesday. Yeah, Woo. and uh, well deserved. Yes, so it's like I can't thank the community enough for allowing us to be here through 15 years of comic book awesome i like to say of like that great product in the community that's keeping people coming through us and enjoying what we offer to the community as a retailer and as a comic book fan home is what i rather be considered as than a retailer so thank you guys all for all your support and everything that you do to allow us to be a comic book store and a community that we all love and uh I, you know i I'm, I'm speechless other than all that i think i just did a huge mouthful of words but I still get choked up and close about how how supportive the community is to us, and I thank you for that. Yeah, awesome, very awesome, and well deserved. And congratulations! And you may catch me on Twitch and on Instagram and Twitter at Tales of Lance. But thank you. May all. you guys have a great week. Okay. Thank you all for listening. We love you. Be safe. And we may catch you next week. May the force be with you. (laughs) 